Welcome back to another episode on the Solex. We got the engine running finally, and let's address the last of the mechanical parts today. So that will be new tires, new chain, and the kickstand. Uh, we also need a nickname for this thing. So if you have any ideas, comment down below. Let me know what you think. Maybe death trap, but it's a bit obvious. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. And without further ado, let's get straight to it. So apparently I have the wrong tires, I've ordered them wrong. Apparently there are two models of this Solex, one with 19 inch wheels and one with 24, and I've ordered the wrong ones. So I'm going to just remount this front rim in the bike and we'll have a look at the kickstand. What a hassle. We got the old one out, pretty bent and rusted and shot and everything. So let's put this thing in the bin and grab our new one. Our fresh kickstand. Let's uh, put this thing on. So we got the new kickstand on, it looks a bit odd because of a new part on an old bike, but I'd rather have a stable kickstand. Uh, next up, I think I'm going to flip the bike and get the rear wheel off so I can get the chain off and have a look at the wheel as well. So we got the old chain off, nothing special. The torpedo style brake works as is, so if you're riding forward, you can freewheel the sprocket but if you step backwards so basically the sprocket goes in reverse with the rear wheel then it locks up and that way you have a rear brake this is not a very good brake it's pretty sketchy uh, so that's why i might upgrade the front to a drum brake if i can find a hub a drum brake hub but it'll do for now so still works fine you can still freewheel which is good that way you don't have to pedal all the way up to speed let's get the new chain and get it to size so the wheel is off because i actually had to take the wheel off to get the chain cover off because this little bolt or the screw that fits on the other side here is not reachable when the wheel is in so take the wheel off and then you have the screw here this one over here and one in the back here then you can take the chain cover off. So big hassle for something so stupid, but now we can get the chain to length and cut it and mount it. Chain is to length. We got the link in. I'm not going to close it just yet because it's a one-time use press fit link or however you want to call it. So I'm just going to leave it open for now, it runs great, but I can still open the chain if needed, if I need some easy mounting for something, for example the rear wheel. So that's another part done. Another part we have to do is figuring out this decompression system. So basically we have to push this bolt down to make it decompress and therefore I've ordered a little kit that has the decompression lever from the newer style bikes so hopefully i can make something work on this uh, racing head to have it decompress so i can actually shut this thing down now let's have a look at the parts and see what we can make so we have these three parts these are all laser cut stainless steel on the newer style bikes uh, this lever 
sits on top of the bolt. Uh, maybe it's a better demonstration like this. Something like this. And then a cable pulls this lever down. And that way it decompresses. And I'm not sure if I'll be able to use this style. The other style is maybe a bit easier. Fits in this lip right here. And then onto the bolt. There are some provisions here in the head or in the motor bracket to fit a cable of some sort. So I'm going to have a look at what cables I have and what I can make for this. So this is the idea I have. You can fit a cable in this bracket. It fits pretty snug, so I don't think it'll go anywhere. But if need be, there's actually a hole underneath it that is closed up in the cylinder head itself. If needed, I can always snake a cable through that hole and then it will definitely go nowhere. This little bracket will stay here. This other piece came in the kit. I'm going to try and weld it on something like this if we can fit the cable guide in this spot where the cable is now and hold it onto this bracket the second bracket then if we will pull the cable it'll shorten it and then it'll it should decompress i'm going to lightly tack these two brackets together and then mock it up so i can show you guys and if it works we can fully uh, weld it and mount it up Some of you might already know that I'm not a welder, and I've proven that yet again. <laughs> I think I have some issues with gas flow or something, I'm not sure. So we got it all mounted up, and so the idea is, I'm just going to demonstrate this with one hand. If you pull the cable, the cable guide goes down. So if you pull the cable hard enough, the cable guide will push down on the bracket, and that will decompress the engine. It does hit a little bit on the spark plug cap but should be fine yes i've painted it black to hide my ugly welds <laughs> so i did not end up welding a nut in here i just uh closed the tabs a little bit should be fine now all we have left is to find a a little handle to decompress with i'm actually not sure if i still have something in stock let's have a look I found this old brake handle from another bike. This will do for just now, just temporary. So I can mount up the cable and have some way of stopping this thing. So let's see if we can mount this thing. Yes, it'll be ugly for now, but it doesn't matter. I actually think this brake handle is from a Solex. <laughs> Oh, yes, it works perfect. <clears throat> yeah, it's ugly, it's just temporary. <laughs> I am pulling this popular cap a bit. Eh, should be fine. It's not like we're using this all the time. No decompression. You can actually feel and hear decompression. And this is decompressing a lot easier. So yeah, this works perfect. Nice. <laughs> we got the correct tires. These are so tiny. This thing will be sketchy as hell. So let's start with the rear wheel. Let's take it out and polish the rim a bit and then fit some new tires. <laughs> After a lot of cleaning, these wheels came out pretty nice. So let's mount these tires and mount them back on the bike. We're going to use the zip tie method again to mount these tires on the rims. These tires are non-directional, so it makes it a bit easier. So let's just put these in. Ah, oh, yes!
Max speed 50 kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. I hope we get there. <laughs> Yes, looks good. Now just clean it off with some brake cleaner. So we use a WD-40. We got the wheel on. Looks pretty nice with the white wall or with the white slightly dirty wall. I'll give it a clean when we go out. Looks nice. Let's get to the front. Yes, got them both on. So all we have left to do now is get the flywheel fixed because uh, the broken key, uh, I think we have found a solution, but more on that later. And then we should be able to go on a first test drive. So thank you very much for watching. If you thought this was any helpful, please consider subscribing and leaving a like because that really helps the channel. And see you in the next one. Bye.